Good morning. Um, this morning I want to talk to you about the murder of 63-year-old David Lawrence, who died on the 3rd of December 2015 at Morfitt Vale. David lived at 7 Godfrey Court, Morfitt Vale, with his de facto wife of about 18 months. Um, but David himself had lived in that house for pretty close to 30 years. He was a well-known and popular member of that community, and up until his death, he would enjoyed good health throughout his life. His only recent medical conditions and problems had been a bit of a sore back, for which he was taking some very um, minor medications. So in short, there was no existing medical conditions that were likely to have contributed to his death. But we do know that several days before he died, he became very unwell and ceased all contact um, with the outside world. Um, of significance, he received calls uh, on his mobile phone, even on his um, birthday, and those calls went unanswered. The initial investigation into this matter was conducted by South Coast Police, uh, and when they attended the scene, there were some aspects of it that they felt uncomfortable with, and it was what we would call an unexplained death. And that simply is, um, David was a person, although elderly, apparently of good health, and had died for apparent for apparently no obvious reason. They contacted their local detectives who went out and had a look and they commenced a coronial investigation. Consistent with their other unexplained deaths, um, they had a forensic examination conducted at the scene and continued on with their investigation. It was to be a considerable period of time before toxicology results were received and when those results were received, that identified that there were seven prescription-based medications contained within his body, two of which were medications prescribed to David and which would not have contributed to his death. Significantly, five other types of medication were present, two of which contained lethal, level, leaf, two of which contained lethal levels of those drugs and are believed to be responsible for his death. We believe that a person very close to David deliberately poisoned him and they did that with the intention of killing him. We're certain that the fatal overdose that was given to him was given to him in drinks and possibly food in the lead up to his death but we're not sure over what time they were given. But certainly the last dose would have been given very proximate to his death. It should be obvious to everybody that in a case like this that the focus of our investigation will be those closest to him, that those involved in changing his will and the beneficiaries of his will and that aside from that, we would keep an open mind and explore every possibility. On the 17th of February, detectives from Major Crime travelled to New South Wales and with the assistance of Lake Illawarra detectives, executed search warrant on a premises there and interviewed several people and seized various items of interest. The, whilst I can't disclose the items that were seized, I can say that subsequent examination of those items has been able to advance the investigation and it's progressing well. We expect in the coming days or weeks that further uh, warrants will be executed in New South Wales and at this point inquiries in relation to Mr Lawrence's death are ongoing and it's very much an active investigation. What we need to know from members of the public is information about David's personal circumstances, um, information about any conflicts in his life or problems he may have been having, circumstances around the creation of his will, and his intentions relative to the distribution of his assets upon his death. So just to make that clear, we want to know anything 
about any conflicts that David had with anybody, any information people have about the creation or alterations to his will, and anything people know about David's stated intentions about how he wanted his assets to ultimately be dispersed upon his death at some future time. So it's important that people reflect back over the last couple of years, because now, with the benefit of hindsight and knowing that he has been murdered, they may view conversations and things that happened in the past differently. So with the benefit of hindsight, we'd ask people to reflect, think about their discussions with David, and if they think it may be of assistance to us, to call Crime Stoppers tonight. Thank you. What was it exactly that um, made you declare this a major crime? Was there one specific moment? Um, well, what's common with these matters, as I said, is that often a death is unexplained and you'll conduct an investigation and then even once you have a cause of death sometimes it still doesn't believe that it, it doesn't make it a murder necessarily. Um, it could be some other reason. So um, we reached that point when we um, found lethal levels of drugs in his system. We thought, well, this is you know, very unusual, but it still didn't mean that it was a murder at that point. But down the track, when we did more uh, investigation and slowly started to put together the picture, of the last months of his life, um, we became certain that he'd been deliberately killed. But I won't say exactly what the tipping point was. When you say that he was very ill for a number of days before his death, do you think that he'd been given these drugs a couple of days before he died? Is that what you're saying, that it took a while before he actually was killed? Um, it's difficult for us to be certain on that at the moment because there's still some more work that needs to be done in that regard. But obviously one of the possibilities is that he was poisoned slowly over a period of time and culminating in a fatal dose being delivered very close to his death, um, or it may have simply been over a few days. But we are certain that um, he was poisoned very proximate to his death. This clearly would have been a very, um, I guess, it would have been an awful way to go, wouldn't it? In terms of being poisoned, it would have been a very painful death? Well, we don't, we don't see poisoning deaths very often, so it's really... Um, very occasionally we get this type of death, so it's very, very unusual. But all the deaths are terrible, and in terms of how or what impact the drugs would have had and, and what he would have felt, we really can't be certain of that at this stage. Obviously, you're speaking to those closest to him and that closest family. How are his family coping with this latest development? Um, we've had um, close contact um, since his death with um, David's family, like his siblings, um, and um, they've been helping us all the way through. So, um, you know, they're, they're not people that we're looking at in relation to his death, um, and they're very much um, the surviving victims. Um, is, is his partner someone that you're looking at? Is that the partner? Um, well, clearly, if you look at this sort of death, the people who you're going to have a significant focus on and who are gonna, going to come under intense scrutiny is the current partner and is other people close to him and it is people involved in the creation of his will, and it is people who are beneficiaries of the will. But as I say, you will keep an open mind and consider every possibility other than just that. Does she still live in South Australia, or has she since moved? Uh, she's moved. To New South Wales? To Dapto. Do you think more than one person possibly was involved? Um, I wouldn't like to speculate on that at the moment. Do you know who altered the will, and can you tell us who altered the will? Uh, we do, and no, I can't Was it tell you that. Um, we, we've interviewed several people. Is she helping in the investigation? Has she been cooperative? Uh, she's one of several people we've spoken to. Was the victim a particularly wealthy man, or had come into any money, or anything like that? Was there? Um, it is. It's fair to say that his estate is an amount that is worth somebody killing somebody for, that somebody would find that amount of money attractive, but it's not a massive will, but it's certainly substantial. Are there children? Does he have children? Uh, not of, of his own. What do you do for a living? I'll check that for you after. So can you confirm to us that um, his de facto partner's house was right in the de facto on his own right? Yes. Does she live there alone? Uh, there's, there's a number of people living at the house. Um, and those people have been interviewed. Can you say if she's your main suspect? Uh, what, I would, that way. What, what I would say is that 
you know, it would be clear to everybody that when you have somebody poisoned and the food is fed sorry, when you have somebody poisoned and the poison is given to the person, certainly in drinks and possibly food, that it's going to be people that are closely associated with the victim. It doesn't necessarily mean it is the partner, but it, it, it is going to be somebody close. And certainly when you have a will changed um, in the weeks leading up to the death, um, that's going to increase suspicion. But it's important in this investigation and with all our investigations that we keep an open mind um, to everything, but that's certainly a focus of the investigation. Do you believe the will was changed without his knowledge? Uh, I won't go into too much about the will, but certainly there was changes to the will that do give us concern. And you've got plans to you know, issue warrants on for other searches in New South Wales. Is it that same suburb of Bourne? No, there, there'll be searches for a number of reasons at other locations. Um, is, are there any difficulties um, investigating you know, what are we, at least 12 months down the track? No, because um, the original police that went did a good job, and as I say, to Unexplained deaths are not uncommon. We go to a, lot, a great number of unexplained deaths every year where you go and you think, why did this person die? And um, because you don't know why they die, um, you take steps to make sure that you don't lose evidence, that you secure evidence um, in case it does turn out to be suspicious. And if it's not suspicious, that same evidence will then be used in a coroner's file to go to the coroner. So uh, the initial police went there, did a good job, and in fact, um, some of the evidence they seized is crucial to the investigation, so we didn't lose any evidence at all. Police drugs, have they been prescribed to any other members of this family? Um, some of those drugs have been prescribed to people close to him. So he's de facto part I won't say. Why did the toxicology results take? You said a considerable period. Is that normal? It doesn't take that long for results yeah, to The come? toxicology results um, generally take a long time because there are a lot of requests for toxicology results and you know with this there's seven different sorts of drugs there and so they've got to be unravelled so um, there was no delay in the toxicology it's just the time it takes. So when did you get those results back? I'd have to check. I th my recollection is that it's um, around the middle of last year but then of course the results came back and simply told us that there were lethal levels of drugs but there could be um, a number of reasons why that could be, um, aside from murder. So we had to do investigation to, I guess, develop the case whether it's natural causes or whether it was a murder. Would you have a message for the person responsible for that option? I, I would suggest that um, the person involved in this um, would, be, would know that we would be looking at them. Um, and I would encourage people around the person responsible for this crime to ensure that they don't become embroiled in it, um, they don't defend um, the person who's committed this crime, and that they come forward with any information they might have as well. What do you need then just to, to, to get to the point of land charges? Do you, do you, are you just looking for a vital piece of evidence, a confession? What, what do you um, want? The, it's fair to say that this is an investigation where we've got considerable investigation opportunities, where we're pretty happy the way it's going at this stage. Um, the searches were fruitful interstate. That's given us more leads, and we're pursuing those leads now. So we're in the stage of hopefully moving towards building a comprehensive brief of evidence. Was Mr Lawrence's partner surprised when you arrived at the property and she helping in any way? What's she been saying? Um, she's been very supportive. All of the people um, that we spoke to participated in interviews, but it wouldn't be appropriate for me to say what they've said. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.